This Hangout is live on air. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hooping Live. I look like I'm very tired right now, so let's just uh, all get it out of our systems now and say, hey, is Audrey a zombie? And just realize that she's not, and accept the fact that sometimes we have those days where the bags just won't go away. No matter how much time you spend with the concealer, it just won't happen. So those are kind of one of the days I'm having. But besides that, it has been an awesome day. And as most of you know, I'm super stoked about tonight's show because we have a super special guest um, that a lot of people have requested to see, um, including my own personal team members who have been super stoked to kind of hear um, this voice that has been so prominent in the hooping community. So. I'm really excited to hear more about um, what we're about to learn about and see some awesome hooping tonight. So while all of you kind of flow in, I'll give you the lowdown on what the show is all about. And of course, I'm going to do the weird thing where I go and make sure the video is actually working because of my odd paranoia. Mm -hmm. It looks like, yep, we're working. Awesome, you guys can see me, and I look weird as always. Um, of course, a lot of us find it weird to look at ourselves, but anyway. Um, okay, so this is Hooping Live. Our show's every Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern, USA time. I've, apparently, I don't need to say all those words, but it sounds more like when I say it, so I'm just going to say it anyway. Um, but, uh, yes, so our show's all about hooping, hoop dance, and the hooping lifestyle. Very often, we go off topic and talk about um, relevant topics in the world and how we feel about them as hoopers, etc., etc., especially when we have special guests that have certain topics. So tonight we're really going to be trying to focus on, um, you know, the really awesome, innovative stuff that um, Benjamin, Mer Benjamin Berry, who is our special guest, if you didn't know already, has to offer to the community as well as his advice towards kind of some heavier topics. So if you guys are ready for it, go ahead and grab your hoops, get your tea, coffee, whatever you want to drink, get it ready to go because we're going to have an awesome show. I'll go ahead and introduce the um, panel member we have tonight, Will, is going to try to come later, around 9.30, I think. But for right now, we do have Becca Smith. Um, she doesn't have good audio, so I'll give you a quick glance at her. Um, Becca, if you want to type in the side and let me know if you want to do a demo or something, let me know real quick while I give some links. Um, I will show you her in a second, though. She is the kind of comment guru of Hooping Live. If you are interested in being a part of the Hooping Live team, you can email us at info at hoopinglive.com and send us an email about being a part of the team. Maybe you have a comment, question, or concern. We kind of take everything on that email address and are very interested in hearing your voice to make Hooping Live about what you guys want to see and hear. I mean, because of all of your emails and comments, we have Benjamin here tonight, so... You know, it does make a difference when I see the same name over and over again, which was kind of like what happened with Benjamin here. So if you guys really kind of make, because I'm, I'm for some reason really hard to like get focused. I'm like ADD to the max, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. So if I see the same name over and over again, I'm like, okay, you know, who the heck is this person? And then lo and behold, I'm already friends with him. I'm like, oh, I know him. And then, you know, it, it all works out. So if um, there's a, a hooper you want to see, just comment about that person, email me about that person, and say, you know, Audrey, I think it's a great idea if we have this person on because of X, Y, and Z. I'm going to shut up and let you guys watch Becca do a quick little demo, and then I will do mine, and I will introduce the um, famous Bill Benjamin. Or Bill Benjamin, really, Audrey? Chakra, that was his fault. <laughs> Benjamin Barry. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense. All right, Becca, please hoop before I make myself sound even more like a jerk than I already have.
All right. <laughs> Um, that was awesome. Thank you, Becca. I put myself on mute, mute so you didn't hear me going, ooh, ah. But, um, in any time, if you guys see, um, Bill, just kidding, his name's Benjamin. Um, if you see Benjamin, I, I, am I supposed to call you Benjamin? Like, I feel like it's so many syllables. Like, <laughs> Ben, year of the Ben, feels a little bit more, uh, natural. But anyway, um, if you guys see anything that anyone does on the show that you're wanting to learn, just try to explain the trick or concept as well as you can and we'll try. He's pooping. And we'll try to... Um... <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm not going to make a big deal every time my cat goes to the bathroom, but it's cute. <laughs> He's shaking his little tail. Why are you doing that? Do you guys see that? He's like shaking his tail. I'm sorry. This is like violating my cat's privacy. <laughs> it's so cute though. Um, if you see anything you want us to do uh, or teach you, just let us know in the comments below and we will do our best. I will go, <laughs> I'll go ahead and do a quick demo and introduce the uh, one and only Benjamin Barry. Not Bill. His name is not even close to Bill. That's the sad part. Shows you where my head is. Are you pooping? Okay. You done? some sassafrat. Am I still muted? Nope. <laughs> oh my god, I will never be like a good news prompter person. I'll be like, can you, can you hear me? Like one eyeball to the camera. <sighs> okay. Um, <laughs> Alright guys, so while you guys get your comments in, and I fix my hair there, um, and you get your <laughs> post your comments down down below and uh, just like you would any other YouTube comment and if you have something special you want to start thinking about for Benjamin we are always kind of going straight up to the end of the hour so if you want to ask him something I would suggest thinking about it now if you haven't already and getting those comments in because we can only go up to about 10.02 10.02 to the latest because, you know, he is kind of staying up a little bit later. Um, he's going to get pretty late as a special guest. So try to get those comments in so we can get as many kind of packed in before the end of the show. But um, we are going to be, like I said, talking about a um, some subjects that both um, Benjamin and I have both agreed that are kind of a good idea to kind of put out right now, especially with everything going on in the media. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you guys, if you don't know him already, Benjamin Barry, the one and only. So Benjamin, if you'd like to go ahead and say hello and talk about kind of how long you've been hooping, um, your essence of being a hoop dancer, and anything else you want to talk about, like your tour and links and stuff, here's a good chance to do that. Hello. <laughs> Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. 
Do I look okay? Am I clear? Yeah. Am I shaky? No, you're like really okay. clear. You're a little. Sh- are you having your? Do you have your like MacBook on your or whatever on your lap? Uh, it's on my knees. But like when I was saying, you guys, you're kind of like uh, like slow motion. But now you're totally fine. I don't know. But anyways, hi. My name is Benjamin Barry, aka Bill Benjamin. Whatever. <laughs> Call me whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, I've been hooping for two years on July 25th. Uh, my essence as a hoop dancer. Um, I don't know. I mean, the first hooper I ever saw a video of was Lisa Lottie, and I guess something about her style of hooping really spoke to me. Uh, she is a circus hooper. Not that I really have circus training or can do a split yet or anything. But I definitely like the flashy side of it. But at the same time, um, hooping helped me realize my passion for dance as well. So I would say that I like to incorporate a lot of modern dance into my hooping as well. Um, I'm a cancer. Uh, so, and then as for thing, other things to talk about, um, I did appear on an online competition called Hooping Idol, which is done by hooping.org, and I placed in the semifinals this year. And I also tried out for the Electric Force Hoop Troupe and made it on the troupe, which I'll be performing with them in, like, 72 hours. (laughs) Um, So those are, like, things I've done recently. And what I'm about to do is be traveling and teaching workshops across many eastern states. Um, At the end, I'll like post, I'll have Audrey post a list of the cities in the description or on the Hooping Live Facebook page or something, so you can all see those. Or you can find me, Benjamin Berry, on Facebook and ask me about those. Um, So I think that's enough of an introduction. Now maybe we can take a comment and I'll bring you on a move or something. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. Thank you. And that's super cool that you have, you know, participated in so much of kind of what goes on in the community because I know like Hooping Idol and stuff was really popular for a while and and in my personal opinion, I felt like a lot of it had died out and I feel like there's this new wave of hoopers that kind of came in, including you and a few others that really brought all that back to life because mm-hmm. I know for a while there was kind of a lull in the hooping community where people were like, oh, there's a lot of, like, you know, crap talking and, you know, degrading and people kind of just a lot of negativity. And I'm really happy to see people like you and a few other hoopers especially that are bringing that light back into hooping idol and that kind of spunkiness. Um, And as you had said earlier, which I love that word, quirky kind of, you know, energy back into hooping, which is, you know, what it's all about. I mean, we're hula hooping, for God's sake. I mean, (laughs) you know, it's beautiful, it's sexy, it's fun, it's everything in one, and I feel like if we get to be a part of this community, we should really embrace it, and I feel like that's one thing I really love about what, you know, Benjamin has been doing lately, and something we should really kind of all take from him. Um, Now, Benjamin, did you want to do a demo or something and show people kind of how your style is? Sure, I could do that. Let me set up my camera. All right, awesome. All right, well, he, while he sets up, um, I will talk to you about relevant things of my life, like my cat. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, he has a lot of room. This will be good. So, yeah, guys, like I said, try to get those comments in as quickly as possible so we can um, get through as many as we can. Of course, all the shows are pre or are recorded, so you can watch them after the matter as well. But, um, you know, right now you're here, you're live, so it's a great opportunity to um, talk to Benjamin, you know, as if you're, you know, texting him or something, I guess. I'll be your I'll be your, your cell phone. All right, I'm going to let him hoop. Yeah. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Wait. 
my god, that is so cool. Thanks, I like that movie. I learned it from Frank Olmsted. Please, please don't stop. I won't. Oh my god, dude. I, ooh, that was saucy as hell. Uh, okay, right. and then I also like to do... <laughs> Lately I've really been liking triple hoops. Oh. So it's kind of fun, like you can... But then you can... Although I don't have any ceiling space in here. I bet but... you're, the people live, that live upstairs are loving you. I know, right? <laughs> but they're fun to do some things with. Like, this is one of my favorite triple hoops. Isolation versus eight petal oh. and this flower. You know what? Thanks. No one thinks that looks cool, okay? So, I'm just kidding. That is yeah. so cool. I love seeing this stuff, guys. Like, this is innovative right here. I mean, oh, my God, dude. All right. Well, this is Barry, everyone. Um, signing off now. I'm officially irrelevant to the hooping community. So, Benjamin, I'm, <laughs> I'm giving you the rights to hooping live, and uh, see you later. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Well, if you haven't seen him before, you've seen him now. Um, that was awesome, Benjamin. Thank you so much for showing us that. Now, I'm Thanks. sure you guys just saw a lot of stuff that was all right. Beck has dropped off the planet. Um, a lot of <laughs> hold on. I'll let me click on the link here. Make sure we can get all the comments. Um, what time is it? It's not nine thirty, is it? No. Um. If you guys see anything that he did that you kind of want to learn about, uh, we will try to teach you to the uh, most extent of our ability as possible. Um, now, what I want to talk about before we get, we have a couple comments and I want to kind of get through before we get into the fact that Becca just sent me a message. Hold on. She just lost us. Okay. Um, if any of you guys are having difficulties, which by the viewer count, it looks like you're not, um, but Becca just lost us, but we'll try to get her back here in a second. Um, oh, there she is. Okay. Um, there are a lot of... Oh. All right. What's um, going on? <laughs> uh, end of the world. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, as I was saying, um, what I just saw personally was a lot of really cool, innovative stuff, which I feel like kind of is like with the hooping community. It's like we get like these trends, like wedgies and stuff, and then it's like, oh, that's really, really cool, and then it's kind of like, Rrr. and it's like, oh, something really, really cool, right? And um, when we hit those peaks of something really, really cool, it's typically because we have some sort of hooper who has you know, a super creative mindset, which it seems like Benjamin has, um, considering as much as he's brought into the community, and we get to learn a lot of cool, not not even, like, things that are invented, because, you know, most things have already been done. Uh, well, not most, actually. Hooping is still so new that there's so much to be learned, but, like, there's so much to be played with. It's like we're given all these tools, and we have so much to work with still, and it's really cool to see people like him um, or like Nick Gazzardo, or, you know, even people like Baxter and Tiana that come into our community and bring such a cool new, um, I don't know, energy into the hooping community, which is, I'm, I'm not going to say it's rare, but it's really fun when we find those really spunky people that really not only care about the community as a whole, but um, trying to bring something new. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the first comment and because I, I have a lot of things I want Benjamin to talk to us about. And, uh, yeah, so let's see. Um, Solfino says, this song I need to share with the world. The comments are being stubborn again. I won't give up, guys. I can only see him as a thumbnail. Um, he shouldn't just be a thumbnail. Um. <laughs> On my video, it shows you not as a thumbnail, so no one else has said that, so I'm going to assume that that is um, just a minor error with that. Um, I will, anytime Benjamin talks, I am going to make him full screen, so hopefully that will continue. We will listen to the song, 
it, it's string co cheese quartet oasis wonderwall string cheese string cheese oh my god string quartet they're a great it, it's like kind of like an orchestra they do a lot of really popular songs it's actually really good music so um thank you we have Juanita O'Connor says, I'm having so much trouble figuring out a three-beat weave. I can do a two-beat, but after that I just get tangled. Any tips? Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and let Benjamin be the first to answer these questions. Um, Benjamin, you want to talk a little bit about how you figured out the three-beat weave? If yes, you... I can do that. I actually just taught the three-beat weave to a woman on the beach the other day. So let me do that. So you need two hoops, obviously. You said that you can do the two-beat weave, which looks like this for anyone that doesn't know. Okay. So before you learn the three-beat, um, you're going to want to be able to do the two-beat with both arms on top. So what I mean by that is if you watch right now, see that my left arm stays above my right arm. You want to be able to also do it with your right arm on top, which might feel a little bit awkward if it's not the way you're used to. So once you've practiced both of those, one hoop at a time, practice this little sequence where you do a weave, but when it goes across your body, you spin once on your thumb, catch again, weave, spin on your thumb, weave, and remember, you're you're doing the thumb spin when it's across your body, like that. And then you'll do that on the other side. So you practice that both ways. OK, and then you're going to do a two-beat weave. And basically, the hoop that's on top, when it goes across your body, you're going to do the thumb switch. I'll try to like kind of show you this as slowly as possible. I'm going to do the thumb switch. The hoop is in my, I'll do it on this side. The hoop is in my left hand. Left arm is on top. So I want to get it underneath. So I'm going to do the thumb switch. Now it's under. See that? And then I'm just going to do the weave. Like that. And then I'm going to, now that my right arm is on top, I'm going to do the thumb switch to get my right arm on the bottom when it goes across like that. And then once you've practiced it on both sides, you can do it every beat like this. And then eventually you can get your hands really close together. And then eventually you can kind of learn this like tracer variation where you trace up and down your arm. Like that. And you can also learn the reverse three beat weave. If you can do a reverse two-beat, like this. And once you have both of those, you can combine them to create a fountain. But it's kind of hard to break that down. Right now, it's really something you just need to practice. But I know that you can find tutorials. Um, Jasmine Kiani, that's K-I-N, no, K-I-E-N-N-E, -E, does a lot of weave tutorials. So if you look on YouTube, you'll find that. So again, just remember, practice on one hand. Across your body, you do the thumb, the thumb spin. You do one spin on your thumb, back into the weave. Practice that on both sides. Two B weave. The hoop that is on top, you do the thumb switch to get it underneath, like that. And that is the three B weave. Awesome. That was a great explanation. Thank you. I think it'd be really cool to take your. Um, your workshop, where are you going to be touring? Um, Akron, Columbus. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to, first I'm doing one in Grand Rapids to uh, Wednesday. Then I'm doing Akron, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, Sarasota, Florida. What? Lots of places in Florida. Are you coming to Sarasota? Where's that? Um, 
It's where I live. So. It's south or north? <laughs> don't, don't you give me sass. I know. <laughs> um, no, I actually have no idea. It's um, kind of mm. near the that area, kind of near Tampa. Um, but you should... doing one in Gainesville. Um, no, you need to come a little closer. We have so many Hoopers in this area. Um, you know what? If you don't work something out, let me talk to the community. Pardon me, the community here. If you have time to stop by, I have a guest bedroom, and I mean, obviously, you wouldn't have to pay for meals or a place to stay, but we would love to probably have you here. I mean, that'd be really cool. And if anything, we could even make like a video together because I'm sure the Hooping Live uh, fans would like die a little bit. That'd be cool. They'd be fangirling. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that after. Yeah, for sure. Let's not waste any of the live time passing yeah. it out. Yeah, live time wasted. Um, awesome. Well, let's I know. It's 9.30. Wasted. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Yeah, um, awesome. Well, I will again post those dates. We will learn more about that at the end of the show, so we won't worry about that right the second. Let's get to some more of these comments here. We have, <laughs> um, we have a comment from Watermelon Sock. Okay, um, I, lo I love watermelon. Um, said, so, um, what's up? She what? wants isolation. Uh, Sorry, no. Yeah, I'm gonna read the comment out loud really quick so everyone knows what's what's being taught. Um, yeah, can you show me some isolations? Sorry, that was. Not... Okay, me. Well, um, yeah, isolations. Ben, go for it. Alrighty, so the first isolation I usually teach people is a basic one-handed isolation. So in order to do this, you have an inside grip of the hoop, uh, and you want to practice just holding it and keeping the center point in the same place, tracing from 3 to 9 o'clock, or from east to west if it was a compass. So basically the bottom half of the circle you want to just trace, keeping a grip the entire time. So then after you've practiced that enough, you can also do it in a mirror. Um, you're going to get to this point. You can do it either way, but I think it's easier if you do it to the point where you're doing a thumbs down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let go. It's going to roll across the back of my hand, and I'm going to catch it on the opposite side like this. Okay? And then you trace the bottom half again. And I'm going to hold it right now to simulate slow motion. It goes like this against the back of your hand. You open up, catch it over here, and then trace again. And so the biggest mistake people make with this is they don't move their arm all the way from over here to over here. So they'll just do this. But you want to keep the hoop in the same space. So you have to really move your arm from this side of the circle all the way to this point and the energy is really coming from your shoulder. Also, have a fully extended arm, no bent elbows, and this is what it looks like continuously. Another easy isolation I'll show you really quick is a two-handed isolation. Um, I have my right hand on the hoop. I'm going to cross my left hand over it. My wrists are touching, and then I'm going to basically let go with my right hand. So my left one's holding it. I bring it up, keeping my wrist touching and crossing up to the top. They're still crossing. Let go with my left hand now. Keep them crossing down here. And then if you do that continuously, this is what it looks like. So you can easily go from isolation, maybe like turn to the side back to straight, and then get into your two-handed. And those are two very beginner isolations. And there's lots of other variations to find. Like, you can do an iso top like that, which is basically where you slide forward, let it roll forward on your hand, slide back, and you learn to kind of do that all in one motion, flicking your arm and wrist up. I'm sorry I'm going so fast. It's just I want to cram in as many No. <laughs> You're doing a really good job, actually. You're actually teaching me some really cool um, teaching methods. And I just want to reiterate again, as he's teaching you guys this stuff, I know a lot of these tricks you guys have asked about before, 
but I think it's really important that you learn in different ways, but you can watch this video, and as I said earlier, Ben, that they can watch this video over and over again, so you give me the best description. This is like a tutorial that you're like filming right now, so pretty much we're filming something for them to watch again and again, so you know, feel free to explain and show as much as you want while you have airtime. Awesome. So I think that's probably enough isolations right now. Okay. Um, cause, but I see the next the next comment. If you want, I could read it. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's great. Go for it. Boxers or, br or briefs, that one? Because <laughs> um, that's the next comment. Let's see what we have going on here. Today. I prefer briefs. Uh, they give great support. Uh, they are flattering. Don't they have this special hole? The hole? This, you know what? I'm going to stop talking. Um, <laughs> um, um, okay. Yeah, you want to talk about the from boxers or briefs to the butt pass. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Someone asked about the butt pass, and actually that's really convenient that they asked that because that's one of the moves that I cover in one of my workshops. Great. Um, one of the workshops I do is all on some of my favorite crowd-pleasing moves and I found that when I do that for an audience, especially a non-Hooper audience, they think it's really sassy and they cheer a lot. Oh, they love it. So, I can I show think, how to do that. I think that's a super cool thing for you to talk about too um, and that's something that I kind of want to personally teach in my own workshops is um crowd-pleasing stuff because probably as you know as a performer it doesn't matter really what you're doing because to them breaks and paddles are like whatever when to a hooper it's like oh my god like look at those like yeah. smooth breaks and paddles when in reality like an isolation or a vortex to a crowd is like the coolest thing in the world so I think it's great that you're kind of focusing on that but uh, yeah go ahead yeah you definitely have to consider your audience so anyways for the butt pass um, I think before you learn that, it's good to learn the regular, like, shoulder wrap, or uh, some people call it a hoop hug, which looks like this. I'll show that one more time. I always teach, and I'll show you from behind. Um, the reason I'm teaching this first is because it's a little bit easier, but it's a similar concept. So basically, I, I'm holding it in my right hand. I'm going to relax my shoulder, because if it's too tense, it'll just like kind of stop or bounce back. I'm letting it go here and then I bring the same hand that I that I let go with, my right hand, behind, get it inside the hoop and get a grip on the inside, like that. So it's good to know how to do that first before you do it on your hip. Um, so now to do the weight. I'm gonna interrupt you really quick on that um, because I am guy. I'm learning. I'm gonna show them something really quick because I am learning this with you guys. I'm actually holding my hoop while he's teaching, which is like super exciting. Um, one thing that I do to help me with that because I have a very small shoulders, so sometimes like shoulder tricks are a little harder because I'm so like sm like frail and small like smallly framed. Something that I like to do with that move um, is actually kind of move with it. So I'll kind of like turn into it, which can kind of be almost like dancey if you make it that way. So kind of like, yeah, moving into it can help if you don't have wider shoulders. But um, yeah, so Benjamin, go ahead. It's also fun to do a hair flip when you do it like this. Like when it goes around to do a kind of... I love the sass. I love it so much. So anyways... Now for the booty pass or the waist strap, um, you're bringing it. You're holding it in your right hand again, going across your left side. You gotta really stick your left hip out so much to the point where if you left it there, it would actually like not fall. That's how far you need to stick your hip out, especially when you're learning it. So you stick it out, and then when it goes back, you have to stick out your behind, and then you have to really go, you have to take it around town, and you have to go all the way to the right, like this. You gotta go left, back, right. I'll show you from behind. So like, you wanna maybe practice the motion without the hoop. Looks a little odd, but who cares? 
So again, same hand that lets go with it, you catch with. And then from there, you can kind of keep a grip on it and twist it, get into like a one-handed smear or a coin flip thing. So what that looks like is, no, it's not what it looks like. What it looks like is this. And that's kind of a cool way to get it into the front plane. Um, you can also kind of like send it back the same way it came. Dude, that's awesome. I love that so much. Um, one thing I really love about that move, guys, um, and I've never seen that before, so this is kind of the first time I've I've seen it, is that um, it makes me feel sexy doing it, and um, we're going to kind of, I want to, we have a lot of comments, but um, and comments can be answered after the show has ended, but, you know, there are a few topics I do want to get to, um, and some of those do include sexuality, um, especially in the hoop community, but um, that move actually, when I was learning it, um, when he was just teaching it, it was the first time I did it, and it made me feel like super sexy doing it, and I think it's very important for all of us to kind of be able to connect the, to that inner, oh my God, I hope I'm not like drawing the line here saying this, but like, you know, connecting to our inner sexual being um, and what makes us feel beautiful and sexy and you know, frisky or however we're feeling at that moment. So, um, yeah, I, I always suggest, and like I said in my uh, workshop that I've been kind of writing out, that's a lot of the stuff I'm focusing on is becoming kind of in tune with that inner dancer that is inside of all of us. Um, I don't know, Ben, what do, you, what do you think about all that kind of topic? About the dancing and the inner sexual being? Yeah, exactly, especially being like... I said earlier, like being a male, especially in the hoop community. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I have testosterone. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, I know what you mean about kind of like having this sexual energy when you perform. Um, like, I remember reading that some people kind of they have the theory that creative energy is tied to sexual energy, and I guess that that's kind of interesting and it makes sense because like the act of procreation is the ultimate act of creativity because you're creating another living being. Um, but anyways, that's like a whole different philosophical thing that people could search. Um, but I definitely do find that like sometimes when I'm performing I tap into sexual energy, I would say. Um, but as for being a man, it's kind of interesting because like uh, I would say in our society, men aren't always encouraged to move in a way that is sexual, at least not a way that is not ultimate masculinity and ultimate, like, sexual masculinity. So, yeah, this is actually a topic that kind of came up recently in Infinite Circles community, which is a Facebook group. Um, and someone posted a thread asking something about, like, where are all the straight male hoopers at? <clears throat> because, she, and then she went on to say that she saw a guy hooping, a male hooping to some hip hop, and she could tell that he was straight by the way he was moving. And she's like basically looking for straight male hoopers because she was thirsty. But also, it brought up an interesting idea that someone judges whether someone is straight or gay based on the way they move. And I found that really interesting, and I definitely think it needs to be talked about because people were saying different opinions in the comments, um, and I chimed in a little bit. And so, yeah, I guess what I learned from that, or what I observed, is that people really do make assumptions based on the way that people move. Um, People will look at someone's appearance in their physical behavior and draw conclusions to their sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. And I guess you can't really blame people for it. It's not all their fault. A big part of it is society. I have compassion for people that think that way because I don't think they really chose to. But I do think that people should be mindful of making assumptions about sexuality based on the way someone moves because I've definitely seen straight men in a way 
that is very graceful and maybe might not be considered masculine. And I've seen gay men that have very masculine flow. So that is what I think about that. Um, what, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, <pretty laughs> I that, I know. Dude, we, we get off topic all the time. Don't even worry about it. But, uh, I got yeah, so, yeah I, that's, that's something. <laughs> yeah, it, it dies, so that's something there. Um, no, that it is true. And, um, and why I think that is such an important topic, especially, is because, I mean, as a female hooper, um, you know, we're... And, and there's always that whole thing that, like, when guys learn to hula hoop, they go like this, and girls go like this kind of thing. And, um, yeah, that's because society does not encourage them to move in a smooth, flowy way. So, yeah, I think that kind of stops a lot of straight men that would consider hooping from trying it out. And I think that's unfortunate because hooping is something that could be enjoyed by straight men. Obviously it is. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at people like Baxter, um, and, you know, Matthias has gotten a lot of hell, too, about, you know, him being too feminine or something, and I know him, and, and I know he... I feel, you feel the same? I mean, in, um, the video that that woman saw that made her post the thread was actually a video of Baxter, and what? she said that she was straight based on the way that he hoops, I guess. But anyways, continue. I just wanted to include that little fun fact. There are so many comments that I want to answer. I feel I bad. Can okay. we go into the night? Yeah, well, let me... <laughs> Well, let me read the next one. We need to go in order here, but um, I did want to just kind of take that topic off. We can't go a little bit past 10 since you are, um, you know, a special guest. But, um, yeah, but I just want to let you guys know, like, especially the non-hooping viewers that do like to comment about stuff like that, um, everyone hoops. I mean, it is something that I'm sure all of us can relate to. Look at that little butt right there. Um, that all of us can relate to... Um, Oh my God! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be distracted by my cat's butt, so I need to move forward here. Uh, so yeah, so what Solfino had said was, "What was a butt tap pass?" You have my total admiration, dude. Do give a rundown on how to accomplish the trick smoothly, Ben, and which he did. You can watch it over and over again if you'd like after the show. Bryant Dang says, um, "Hi, Audrey. Oh, Ben, I know home." Anyways, ah, I am moving. <laughs> Hold oh, man. Um, it's been terrible. I I am moving. It's been terrible. Uh, oh, so does Ben name his hoops? And so sleepy. I just woke up. So, how long has been he been hooping? Also, please, I need your 3DS friend code. I can't wait to go to California to become a panel member. So, has been have Ben been to Thailand before? He should. It's so cool. I just realized Ben is my friend on Facebook. So what's Ben's favorite hooping move? All right. First of all, okay, Brian, let me, you asked the best question. Um, all right, Ben. Go okay. for it. <laughs> Sorry that moving is terrible. I don't really name my hoops, although I named my LED hoop. I have a Hyperion by Argent Data Systems, and I named it Claptrap because that's a character in the video game series Borderlands where Hyperion is like the evil company and I'm kind of a nerd. Um, California sounds cool. I don't really play the 3DS much. I don't have time. Uh, I've never been to Thailand, although I would love to go there. It seems really beautiful and I love Thai food. I actually make a really good Thai coconut curry. Um, we're friends on Facebook. That's great. Uh, my favorite move? I don't know. Um, I, it changes. Lately, I really like to play with um, variations of this, and this is also in my flashy move workshop. Uh, this thing, it's a next spin. And I really like to explore ways that I can like do stuff like that, and other ways that and spin the hoop on my body. Like, I find that it can rest in the, like, bowl of my hip right there. Kind of like balancing that Baxter worked on. Yeah, it's kind of like balancing, but spinning at the same time. It's kind of like that trendy move, the rotating chest roll that everyone was doing, which mm -hmm. I'm not great at. But, like, oh, I just kind of did it. But anyways. 
Yeah, it's hard. There's all sorts of like spin it. You can even do it on your boobs like that. <laughs> if if so I, I, I might be able to do it. I've been loving spinning the hoop like that. Um, and Sharna Rose, if you don't know who Sharna Rose is, she has a million and one awesome variations of that, so you should check her out. She's at Sharna Rose B then on Instagram. Awesome. Anyways, uh, wow, it's hot in here. Like, can I just go through the next question? Yeah, please. Um, is that, hold on, let me see. Um, is that, you said that was your favorite move? Okay. I guess so, yeah. One of them. It's up yeah. there. I have too many. All the time. I'm just going to read the comment out loud just so everyone can uh, hear it. Um, so Rocky and Rich says, Benjamin, show off. Lol, just kidding. Love you and love you on Hooping Idol. Question, are you self-taught or have you taken classes? Can you show how you did the over-the-arm twirl where you toss the hoop over your arm to the back and front? Not sure how to explain. Love you guys. Rocky. Go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you for watching me on Hooping Idol. Uh, I am a bit of a show-off, but that's part of being a performer. Are you self-taught or have you taken classes? Um, I'm self-taught. I have only taken one workshop from Lisa Lottie. Um, oh my god, I bet that was awesome. It was, I could go on and on. She is so sweet and humble. She's amazing. I got to tell her that her video was the first one I ever saw and that she basically inspired me to start hooping and that was awesome. I could go on, but anyways. Um, so I'm self-taught. I did take a teacher training program from Hoopnautica, but that was more teaching how to teach rather than how to hoop. Um, can you show how you did the over-the-arm twirl where you toss the hoop over your arm from the back to the front? Like, maybe like... Um... Or, or like this, or... I mean, that could... I don't know. I, I can... Hold on, let me see. Over... Where you toss the hoop over your arm from the back to the front. Maybe, was it a roll? Did you, like, toss the hoop into a chest roll? Oh, maybe it was this. Did you do that in your... I don't know. Did I? I don't... But... Um, I don't know. We might need to have more description on that one. Is this? That, you know what? That looks more like what she's saying. I did do this in the demo. A continuous arm roll. Um, basically, I'm doing a weave. I go under, and by the way, I have a workshop on arm rolls that I'm teaching in all these cities. You go under your arm, over your shoulder, make sure you get good contact. Let it roll down. Ideally, catch it between your thumb and your pointer finger so that you catch it right in here in your palm and you can grip it. So that's a regular arm roll when you catch it. But what I basically do is I stick my hand in here. I let it kind of go like that. And I immediately bring it here and keep the momentum going so it'll go under. And it's just a continuous circuit like this. I hope that's what you're talking about. If not, Feel free to find me on Facebook, Benjamin Barry, and ask me personally. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, I can't hear you now. Uh, oh, my God. I'm so bad at this microphone. It's like this big thing that, like, I try to get sassy and turn it on. Okay, shut up, Audrey. Um, so our next, ne our next comment, our next comment is from Kristen Abbott, says, I think I've mastered isolations with my right hand. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not ambidextrous. Any tips for mastering isolations with my left hand? Practice. Yep. <laughs> I like, on that one. You know, I'm not ambidextrous either. And yeah. every who you really should practice both ways. So you should practice, like, you know, hooping on the body both ways. You should practice rolls both ways. Yeah. That's just something you have to practice, and eventually it'll get stronger. Absolutely. I think so that... That's my only tip, really, just practice. Oh, yeah, especially as a new hooper, I think learning any trick you learn in your second current, 
as as a kind of a seasoned hooper, get it down now. I mean, it is. I mean, I wish I could go back in time and just be like, oh my god, he's fanning himself. Um, and just like go back in time and be like Audrey, like learn it in your like second current, which is the opposite direction, which you flow naturally. Yeah. It's so important, guys. I mean, it's funny. What? Right, and like I consider myself season two, and just like the last couple weeks, I've had to kick myself in the butt and practice like doing this the whole split time while uh, wheel playing flowers. I realized I can hardly do it this way. Like it's incredibly well. Actually, right now it feels pretty good. So yeah, you got it. But it's, it didn't two weeks ago because I never practiced it that way, and I realized to do this certain move I wanted to do that I had to be able to do it both ways. So even two years into the thing, there are certain moves that I haven't practiced both ways that I need to go back and fix. Yeah, um, and I think it's really important to, I'm going to show you guys this really quick. I think it's cool, especially to see Hoopers that you are inspired by, to realize that you know they don't always get everything down. One thing that I've been working on is leg hooping in my second current. And when I first started, oh. You can see the video on my um, YouTube channel, but I kind of bend forward like that's going to help. I don't know why, but um, I'm trying to learn in my second current, and it's like, it's so hard for me to get for some reason, and sometimes it's like humbling to try to like, you know, learn something in the second current. Um, <laughs> to kind of understand where your students are coming from when they're saying, you know, that's just not working for me. Like, I don't get it. So if you do it in your second current where it's uncomfortable, it's kind of like relearning it. So, um, you know, do you realize that it's not always the easiest thing in the world for, you know, seasoned hoopers to get things right off the bat. We do have our struggles, and it's, you know, not everything is, you know, peachy. But um, anyway, let's move forward to some of these comments and questions. What time is it? All right. Um, let's see. We have an yeah, isolation with the left hand. Just practice. I mean, try to mimic what's happening with your right hand and switch it up. Practice does make perfect. Um, Juanita O'Connor says, dim spins and smears, though. I have trouble with that, too, with the shoulders. It does, it does take time, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Brunella says, what is the most amazing hooping experience you've had? It's totally good. F it's totally good for that. Makes me more comfortable expressing that side. Benjamin? What is the most? Okay. Um, okay. So first for Juanita, uh, one thing I will say really quick is that with the smears, I'm assuming she's talking about like the no handed smear, this thing. One thing that you can do to really help with that is move the rest of your body because the hoop is always in contact with two points, um, up here and down here. And if you do it standing completely straight, you have to rely completely on your arms to propel it. But if you kind of move your hips and like this, it'll sort of help propel it to the point where you almost can do it for a beat without your hands or without your wrists, rather. See? So wiggle more. That's my tip for you, Juanita. <laughs> um, for Bru Buna Bunella, um, my most amazing hooping experience. I don't know what happened to Audrey. Um, Anyways. You go ahead and answer it, and I'll answer it really quick. Um, I have a couple I can think of. Whoa. OK. Um, so I already mentioned the Lisa Lottie workshop I took. She is amazing. She is so sweet. She is so talented. I got to watch her spin five Phoenix hoops at the same time. Or oh my god, are you still there? Oh my god, am I alone? Benjamin, say something. I hear someone. I'm not. Hi. Oh my god. Okay. I don't know what just happened. Are you okay? Are you there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, you like disappeared. Okay, you're good. Okay, can you see so me? I can see. You're great. Yeah, go for it. 
Do you think that it went through the YouTube thing, everything I just said? Or? I heard nothing, but uh, if you want to give a quick... Okay, anyways, I said the Lisa Lottie workshop I took was a great experience, but also um, last fall I won my school's talent show. I go to Alfred State College with a hoop dance routine, and that was like my second time performing in front of a large audience with hoops <laughs> ever. So that was really cool, and it kind of just, like, it was a big confidence boost. It made me realize that, like, people might actually want to watch me do this and stuff, and it just made me feel really good. Plus, I won $500, and I got to buy my Hyperion with that. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Um, I think it's really important to have those kind of moments, by the way, guys. Um, and having the, you know, what was it, the most amazing hoop experience, you know, you do have those, and they kind of change that path for you, like Benjamin said. For me, my personal experience was actually going to my first hoop path workshop with Baxter. Um, you know, it was really cool to experience hoop dance in a whole new kind of realm away from, you know, competitive caddy girls, which I had experienced a lot of, and um, experienced just genuine, vulnerable hooping where you learn who that inner hoop dancer is and dancer in general um, and connecting with that person and it, it, regardless of you know because at, at that point I had just met Baxter so it was you know just purely based on genuine hooping which was a really cool time for me and like kind of like how Benjamin said after I had that workshop my YouTube channel went from like oh, I'm getting a lot of views to, like, YouTube saying, you know, we want you to be part of our community and start making videos on the regular. So that was really cool uh, for me to experience. So I hope that you all have that um, experience. So let's get to the next question because we are starting to run out of time here. Um, let's see. Fire Candy says, show us nifty three-hoop stuff. Um, so you want to just show a couple three-hoop things, and you don't need to have to explain them, but maybe just show us. Unmute yourself, though. I just realized I was muted. Yes, I can do that. And also, I see a really quick question underneath that that'll take me three seconds to answer. Juanita wants to know where I got my shirt. Um, it says, do you hoop row? And that is from Rachel Lust's Etsy. Nice. Um, or you can go to rachellust.com. She's... So that's a couple things I've been liking. That last move was basically like the figure eight two-handed, where you have two hoops in one hand, in one grip. Um, I was like doing an isolation and a switch thing, but also having one on my forearm. So I was doing an anti-spin. So it's like an isolation switch with an anti-spin on your wrist. It's really hard. I'm working on it. And I haven't gotten it like consistent yet. It's so hot in here. Okay, by yeah. The way. Take yourself a breather. That was awesome. Thank you for showing us that stuff. It's really. Audrey. <laughs> oh my God! Can you hear me? No, hear me. Listen, pay attention to me. Can you guys hear me? Cause you're muted, and now I don't know. I don't know I feel like a total jerk. No, it says I can hear me. You guys can hear me. Don't say anything. Shh. I can't really understand what you just said. Um, deal with it. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to move to the next comments. I hope you guys um, can hear us. The Google 
the Googles has been having some issues um, lately, so if you are experiencing any malfunctions, now you know why. Um, we will take these last two... Wait, no, he didn't answer that one. Okay, so last comment of the night, um, and of course you can still post comments down below, and, you know, maybe if you're lucky, if Benjamin has time, he will check back on this video and answer as many comments and questions as, you know, are posted. I know that he has a lot of stuff going on now, but, um, you know, continue to ask questions on the video as well as all the other videos as well, and we will try to teach you as much as we can. So the last comment from tonight is from D. Jennings. says, hello, 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 Hoop family. Just wanted to say hello to everyone tonight. I also want to share that things are starting to resonate with me in my practice. All of a sudden, the tips you've been sharing have taken me to the next level in my hoop world, so thank you. Also, thanks, Bryant, for sharing your tips for getting hoops to Thailand. My friend is in... Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. And interested in that... How awesome is that? I'm sorry, that threw me off. Um, how awesome is that? Anyway, I just feel so blessed with all of the wonderful things that people who have entered my life in the last year and a half of my hooping journey. So thank you, Audrey, and to all the hoopers out there for spreading the love. XOD. That was such a sweet comment. Thank you. Those are the comments that really, I think, keep a lot of us going and very, you know, happy because it is such a huge family. Um... You guys asked some awesome questions tonight, and um, I'm going to go ahead and let Benjamin wrap up any information he wants to give out, any last-minute words and whatnot, and um, then we'll wrap up the show and all that good stuff. All right, Benjamin, take it away. Say what you want to say, and make sure you give any links, tour dates, anything you want to give for people to kind of see last minute. Okay. Um, let me think. So... Yeah, that was fun. I actually kind of want to do a live show on my channel sometime, I think. Like, I really enjoyed that. I'll have to figure out how to do it, but I'm sure Audrey can give me some tips. Um, I will put, I will have Audrey put the link to my YouTube channel in the comments. Um, I've recently gotten into doing tutorials to the point where I'm doing them pretty consistently. Um, you can see all of my Hooping Idol videos there. And also, if you go find me on Facebook. You can find all of my tour dates. Um, I started saying which ones I'm going to, but basically, like, it's East Coast this time. I'm sorry I'm not coming to the West Coast. I'll, I want to do that maybe next summer. Um, you will see me at Electric Forest performing this weekend. Holy crap, it's this weekend. Um, don't hesitate to come hug me. I'm going to be the big drag queen um, in the hoop troupe. I, let's take pictures. Let's take selfies. Let's hoop. Um, I am at fruit hoops, fruit underscore hoops on Instagram. You can email me with any questions. I'll have Audrey put all the info on the bottom. Um, I guess that's really all I want to say. Thank you so much, Audrey, for having me. It was a lot of fun. Um, I hope to hear from everyone. Yeah, have awesome. Fun. Thank you. Um. Oh, that was a good show, guys. All right, that's the kind of stuff I like to see. Um, so, yeah, guys, again, thank you to um, Becca for taking care of the comments, and she was actually one of the people that also really wanted to see Benjamin, not Bill, on the show. And um, so thank you for all of your comments and Instagram stuff, everything that you guys have put out to kind of bring Benjamin here. It's been really cool to have him and, you know, you guys have been... It's so cool to see the consistent amount of viewers throughout the whole show that are just, you know, sitting... It's, it's just kind of cool sometimes to think about, you know, you know, 50 to 100 people standing in front of you listening to you talk. I mean, it doesn't... Sometimes those numbers might not look big on the screen, but, you know, when you have the thought of you have that many people sitting there taking the time out of their day to watch you you know, it's super special. So thank you guys for tuning in to Hooping Live and asking these awesome questions and, you know, showing Benjamin your appreciation for all he's done for the community. 
Um, so hopefully he can come on the show again and, like he said, do his own live show because obviously he's very good at talking to you guys live through a computer screen and has good audio and video, which is such a huge, um, such a huge deal. So once again, guys, info at hoopinglive.com. Email us there if you want to be a part of the team. Have any suggestions, comments, questions, anything like that. Like I said many times, you can rewatch the show over and over. So if you can't get enough then, now here's your chance to watch them live over and over again. Especially if you answered your question, you can just like pretend you're having a conversation with them or something. Um, so yeah, huge, huge, huge thank you to Benjamin for being a part of the show tonight. It's such an honor to have you, and hopefully we can have you again soon. So guys, until next week, we'll see you next time on Hooping Live. HoopingLive.com every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern USA time. Until then, stay close. Bye. 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 <laughs>